Hi, everyone. Good to see you. Looks like they're still connecting to some audio here. All right, and let me share my screen so you can see what I'm looking at, which is this here. Oh, that's weird. Maybe. It's still scrolling. You know, I don't know what just happened there. That's weird. Well, for now, I will put in our attendance form link in the chat. Ladies, you know what to do with that. Um, let's see. All right, there is your attendance form. And here's what I will say about this. You might have gotten an email from me an hour ago telling you that there was gonna be a giveaway for this specific meeting, which we're super excited about. I'm gonna be using the attendance form that you fill out, which is in the chat, to put your name in for the drawing. But you have to be here at the end of both of our speeches today in order to get those, get the prize. So make sure that you can be here for the whole hour. And we're gonna do the drawing after both Emily and Jenny have finished talking. Um, and then if you're here and your name is called, then you will get your prize. Um, okay, this is weird. It's being weird that it's not letting me show it, but I think it's loading. All right, let's try this again. Here we go. I don't know why it won't let me present. But let's stick with that for now. Okay. So here are some of our announcements, our agenda for what we're going to do today, and then that QR code to fill out the attendance form. Like I said, we are going to decide the winner of some of our giveaways today based on what uh, is on our attendance form. So make sure you fill that out. And again, I will be sending it sporadically so that um, everyone who joins new, like uh, who joins after I've already sent it can still see that in the chat because I know some of you are on your phones and you can't use the QR code. So just to kind of run through it, um, we have a few announcements and our first announcement is gonna be that today attending this workshop is our last time to get your name entered into the drawing for our scholarship, our $1,000 scholarship. So by the end of tonight, I will have picked a name of the winner of that $1,000 scholarship. And if you recall, every time that you've come to a workshop, your name has been entered in that many times. So uh, based on how many workshops you come to, that's your that ups your chances right there. So, um, Keep that in mind that if you win the scholarship, you will get an email tomorrow morning, but I'm not going to send out an email to everyone. So you'll only see an email from me tomorrow morning if you do win the scholarship. So just remember that. Um, second thing is we have our mentorship program wrap up celebration. Mia, do you have a question? Yeah, sorry. Um, how many people win the scholarship? Just one this year. Oh, yep. okay. Good Sounds question. Good. Great question. Thank you. Awesome. And then um, I mentioned this last uh, last time, I believe, uh, but we are having our mentorship program wrap up celebration, and that's going to be on May twenty fourth. So that's going to be like our honorary May workshop. So it's still the third Wednesday, but this time it's going to be at six p.m because it's gonna be your whole group, all of the mentees and all of the mentors that they're all gonna be there. It's gonna be super fun. It's gonna be a little different from the, the normal workshops because we are gonna have 
a mentee speak. We're going to have a junior mentee speak. We're going to have a mentor, a college age mentor. Everyone's going to speak. Okay. It's going to be super fun. We're going to kind of look back on the year, fun things that we've done and uh, what we've learned, things like that. We're also going to have a giveaway at that event as well. So be sure to come to that. And if you want to RSVP for it, here it is right in um, the QR code right here. And I can put a link to that in the chat as well as along with the, uh, what's this called? Attendance form. Yep, that's what it is. So check out the chat if you need the link for it and you can't use the QR code. I just put that in there to RSVP to that. Um, third announcement is that we are still open to applications for junior mentees next year. If you are going to be an 11th grader next year, you can ask me about it because that means you're going to be an, uh, that means you're going to be a mentee. And so you have to use a different application. So you can go to our website and apply to be a mentee there or you can email me about it and I can send it to you as well. But if you're gonna be an eighth, ninth or 10th grader next year, you're gonna be a junior mentee again. And we are accepting applications until August 31st. So uh, we are going to, I will put that link in the chat to reapply. And I'm gonna go back to this page for just a second for those who have come in late. Uh, these are some of our announcements. I guess I'll just put it in the chat, all of our links, just to be sure. Okay, so we got three links. The attendance form you gotta fill out, the RSVP to wrap up to the celebration, that's at the end of May, and then to reapply for our program to be a junior mentee next year. Um, again, I'll probably put that in the chat, uh, for a little bit every once in a while, but, um, keep that in mind. Okay. Ladies, we have a super, super exciting lineup today. And as it's our last workshop, I think it's only fitting that we've, we've got some pretty stellar speakers for you today. Um, and before we introduce them, we are going to take our group photo like we do every single month. This is not news. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I will cover all the announcements again at the very end, if anyone missed it, or if you just got here. Um, but we are going to do our group chat or a group photo. So if everyone could please turn their camera on, I am going to take our screenshot for us here in a second. Yee, cuties. So good to see you all. Okay. Ready? One, two, three. So cute. Ah, love it. Okay. We are going to get started because we've got two speakers again and we have to do the giveaway. So we are very busy, but stick around because it's going to be awesome. Our first speaker is going to be Emily Hudson. And so I have a little bio for her and then we're gonna turn it right over to her. So Emily Hudson is a business instructor at Bridgerland Technical College in Logan, Utah, where she received the Outstanding Achievement and Teaching Award. She loves working with her students and seeing the positive changes that education makes in people's lives. With a love for learning, she earned her MBA and accounting degrees and continues to explore opportunities for growth. She is a mentor for women who succeed and was inducted into the National Society of Leadership Success. As a mental health and suicide preventative advocate, she has presented webinars with Paradigm Education in the United States and Canada to support students and faculty. She serves on the Northern Box Elder County Suicide Prevention Solution and has spoken in the community about the importance of emotional resilience. Emily and her husband, Kirk, are parents to three boys and they are the light of her life. So with that, Emily, I will turn it over to you. You're muted. Oh, there you are. I guess I should unmute before I start talking, right? There we go. <laughs> so, okay. 
Well, I am so excited to talk to you girls and stuff. When your cameras were all on, I was like, ah, oh, I'm excited. You, you are just amazing. Um, so where this is the last one of the year, I really hope that, that you can take in all of the things that you have learned throughout the year and really be thinking about what you want to do as you move forward and as you set your goals. And but there's a few other things about goals that I want to talk about today, too, is um, not just setting your goals, but evaluating them and seeing if they still serve you. So one thing I want to do is I want all of you to just imagine that you are standing at the very beginning of a path in the mountains. And as you're standing there, you know exactly where you want to go and you know what path you're going to take to get there and you're just, you're ready to take off. And as you get going, you start like hitting a few obstacles and, but you just keep plugging along. And then off to the side, you see this stream and there's all these flowers and, and you decide to take a break and just sit and just enjoy, enjoy the scenery. Um, and then you get back up and you get back on your path. And as you're walking, you notice that there is another path that you didn't even know existed. You didn't have any idea. It wasn't on any map or on your plan to get from point A to point B. And you look at that and you're like, wow, the path that I thought I was on or that I was on maybe isn't the path I wanna be on. This other path looks really great. And so you take that path and you hit a few more obstacles, um, maybe some great big obstacles. And when you finally get to where you're going, you look out and you see this just beautiful view. And then you take a second and look at yourself and you think, wow, you know, I am stronger than I was when I started physically, emotionally, mentally. I've gone through all of these obstacles along the way and now I'm stronger and I am more resilient. I am more, I'm a better version of myself. And so I want you to think about that as we go through some of these other steps. And I'm going to explain a little bit of my journey along my path of my goals and some of the craziness I've hit. And so, um, so the top line there is what I thought my life was going to be like after high school. I thought I was going to graduate from high school. And in four years, I was going to have my elementary education, special education degree. I was going to go into mild and moderate disabilities. And I just knew exactly what I was going to do. And then what my path really looked like was like the bottom. It took me 17 years to get my bachelor's degree. And within the first semester, I had changed my major. I went in just knowing I was going to be teaching. And then I realized that teaching was not as much of a love as business was. One of my roommates was going into business and I really loved hearing about her classes and what she was learning. And so I decided that I was going to switch my major. So, um, so I switched my major into business and I went for another semester and I got married and went another year. And my sophomore year, I, I was going through a business class and brainstorming some things. And I just thought I really need to start a business. And so I was 20 years old and I went to a whole bunch of banks with a business plan. And they all were just not even going to go for that. And finally, I found one bank that was willing to just give me a shot. And so I, I got the business up and going. I ran it and built it to be a, one of the biggest um, wedding and decorating businesses in Southern Utah at the time. And then I got pregnant with my oldest son. And I decided that I wanted to stay home. And so I sold my business and took some time off and I stayed home for quite a while with my sons. 
And then it finally came a time that I was, I always knew I wanted to get my degree. So I finally went, was able to go back to school and do that. And so even though like it didn't look like the top line, like what I thought it would be, I wouldn't change anything about the crazy line that it ended up being. Um, I am so thankful for all of the little ups and downs and crazy pieces. And I look back and I know that that, like all of those pieces made me who I am today. And so as you're going for your goals, just, just know that it may not always look the way you thought it would when you get started. Um, and so sometimes we really have to um, push forward in our goals. Sometimes it's just like, we started this, we've got to just finish it. We've just got to push. And so um, for you, that might be passing a class at school. It might look like, oh, I'm in a really tough class and I'm struggling and I'm not passing my tests and I, but I really want to pass this class or I want to get a better grade than I have. And so you work really, really hard and that's pushing through. Um, maybe you have a goal to make a new friend. And the last few times that you have reached out and tried to make new friends, it maybe didn't go the way you wanted it to. Um, but it's pushing forward and trying again. Um, so sometimes that's what that looks like. Um, I am one of the things in my life that was a really push forward moment for me was um, in March and April of 2020. And I think everyone's probably have some kind of story about 2020 and kind of the chaos that ensued with that. But there were three things that were happening all simultaneously for me. Um, one, I was an instructor and I had two days to move all of my students online and be ready to work from home. Um, I was also a mom and I had three kids in three different schools and 13 different teachers trying to contact me with information and trying to teach my boys at home. And I was a student in the last two months of my master's program. So I was able to experience COVID from the parent, the teacher, and the student view all at once. And it was pretty crazy. It was really hard. And so some of the things that your experiences may be different than that, but hopefully some of these things that I talk about that will help you as you hit those times in your life where you're like, this is so much. Um, the first is remember why you started the goal in the first place. If you can remember that and just dig deep within yourself and figure out what that is and why you even started, that's going to help you a lot because that gives you a goal post. It gives you something to look forward to. Um, and also make sure that you have a support system. My family ended up being like my biggest cheerleaders. And my boys had to go many nights where they were just like having to be super quiet in the basement so I could get some homework done. And um, but they were huge supporters of that and um and make sure you have like somebody that you can reach out to that will keep you accountable i had a mentor that i would call and i'd say this is really hard and i don't think i can get through this i might need to like figure something else out and he would say well i'm sorry that you feel that way it is really tough let me know when you get your assignment turned in tonight and so having someone that will like push you and still support you and say, you can do it, you can. Um, that's really important. So keep a positive mindset, just keep moving and you know, know that challenges are normal and you can push forward through really hard things. Um, but sometimes we have to like pivot or put aside our goals for a little while. Um, and so it's kind of like, as you're walking down that path, and you see a different path that's that looks like, hey, that might be a better path for me. Um, sometimes that comes when um, when our interests change. So, like, think back to when you were five years old. 
And what, what did you love to do? What was something that, that you really enjoyed doing with your friends and when you'd go out and play and do stuff? And now think about what you do now and how that is different. Um, as, as you set goals, you might set a long-term goal that you think is exactly what you want to do. But as you learn and you grow and you um, have different experiences in life and you see different options and different opportunities that present themselves, you may totally change what you want to do or what path you want to take. And so it's okay to change your goals and to pivot along the way and to, um, to adjust. Um, other times, sometimes you get to choose that pivot point. Sometimes you get to choose, you know, do I want to go down this path of education or do I want to go down that path? But sometimes you don't get to choose. Sometimes life circumstances choose that for you. Um, I have a good friend that she was going into nursing. She knew she wanted to do that her whole life. And then she ended up with some back problems and it made it so that she couldn't do nursing. It didn't matter how dedicated she was to her goal. It didn't matter how hard she pushed. There was no way that she was going to be able to do that anymore. And so she had to pivot just and find a new path. She had, it wasn't that the path was right there for her to see. She had to like go digging through the bushes to find that path, but she did. And she's doing fantastic in her new career. And so just know that sometimes that happens, whether it's health related or your life circumstances change. Sometimes those are things that, that cause a pivot in your life. Um, and then another thing is like putting it aside. Sometimes as we're going down our path and we know what we want to do, um, there might be a death in your family or there might be health challenges or there might be circumstances that come up that make you stop and put your goal to the side for a little while and just enjoy the flowers, enjoy the moment, um, take some time and refigure and take a deep breath and reevaluate. And then at that point, you can pick up your goals again and just keep walking down that path and keep going towards your goal. But it's okay to take those moments to pause. Um, the last thing that I want to talk to you about, and I really hope that if you get nothing else out of what I say tonight, that this is what you will remember that um, goals are used to get you where you wanna be, um, but they don't define who you are. I have students that will sit at my desk all the time and think that their life is over because they didn't pass a class or because um, their goals aren't going the way that they wanted them to. And I cannot tell you enough how much it is okay to not meet your goals sometimes. It's okay to have to like really struggle to meet them. And it doesn't change who you are. It doesn't change your value. It doesn't change, um, like you are you and it's okay. And um, you guys are amazing. You're phenomenal. There are things that you are going to do in your life that only you can do. There are going to be people in your life that you're going to meet and touch and have great experiences with that only you can help them in the way that you are going to help them. And so don't let like a bump in the road or a moment where you have to set aside your goals or a moment where you have to like pivot and change. Don't let that affect who you are. Don't let that affect you because your value is not based on whether or not you meet a goal. So allow your goals to be tools, but don't let them define you. So do any of you have any questions about goals or anything that I've talked about tonight? Okay.
I have a question for you, Emily. This is Jenny Towner, and I'd like to know how you kept a positive attitude with all the obstacles that you found. You had this goal, but then you'd find an obstacle in the path and you'd have to move it aside and work through it. How did you keep a positive attitude and keep going? Um, I think for me, it was focusing a lot on like what I could control. And um, so like, there's the things that you can control and the things that you can influence and then the things that are just outside of your control. And so a lot of times I would just have to focus on like, you know, what, what in that circumstance I could control at that time. Um, and one of the things I could control is, you know, whether I looked at things and said, oh, I can't do this. Like, I can't go to school right now. Rather than, you know, I really get the opportunity to hang out with my kids. I get the opportunity to, um, to do this instead, rather than I can't do something else. And so sometimes like reframing it in my mind of um, not what I felt I couldn't do, but what I got the opportunity to do. So I hope that <laughs> answers that. You got two questions in the chat. So okay. Isabel wants to know what exactly is your job? And Marina wants to know, what do you do when you have so many goals you don't know where to start? Okay, so my job, I am a business and accounting instructor at Bridgerland Technical College. So I teach college students. Um, some of them are straight out of high school and some of them are like, getting ready to retire my age, but want to up their skills. And so I teach a huge range of students that I just really, really love. <laughs> so that's what I do for my job. And then um, when you have a lot of goals, I think the biggest thing is, oh, I find that too. You know, if I have one that's like, oh, this is like my social goal and this is my communication goal. And this is like my job goal. And so some, sometimes you have to just, if you feel like you've got too many on your plate is to just take, look at, look at all of them and list them out and decide which one of those is like the most important one that you need to get done right now and focus on that first. And then if there's one that you're like, oh, I just can't decide between these two, see if you can work stuff into your schedule that will focus on both of them. But then as you get that one done, you might be able to bring up some of the others. And maybe as you're getting those other ones done, some of those that you have on your list might drop off altogether because you've met them while you've been meeting your other goals, just kind of by accident. Or sometimes um, you might have a shift in, in what's, what you value and what you want to accomplish. Is there anything else or? All right, that might be it. So do you have any uh, like concluding thoughts or are you good to move on? I think that's good. Just remember, just don't let your goals define you. That's my biggest thing. So. Perfect. Thanks, Emily, so much. That was amazing. What a, what a great, strong start to our workshop. How exciting. Um, okay, really quick. I'm putting the attendance form link back in the chat. This is the last time that I'm going to put it in because there are a few of you that I know came in and I don't see your name yet on the, the sheet. So I want to make sure that everyone can enter into the drawing for our giveaways at the end. So make sure you fill that out. Um, but we are going to jump right in to our second speaker. Um, so Emily started us off strong and Jenny is gonna, is gonna finish us off strong. So we are so excited about that. And I can introduce Jenny to everyone now. So um, after being a flight attendant and working for Mobile Oil in Atlanta for 10 years, Jenny began working with her father and brother in 1995, and together they opened Tanner Glass and Hardware in the year 2000. 
The sales and installation of glass and residential hardware, as well as commercial glazing projects are the primary focus of the company and has received several awards for excellence in customer service and philanthropy with their generosity to donate to shelters, Habitat for Humanity, and other local causes. Jenny participates in industry groups, sits on a board for home aid, and is a member of several home builders associations around the Wasatch Front. She attended the University of Utah and is a graduate of the Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Business Program. Jenny is vice president of the Professional Women in, Biz in Building and served as a labor organizer for the house that she built, a home that was built by women, which was the first in the nation and will donate scholarships to young women wanting to enter the construction industry. She's married and has two daughters, aged 16 and 21. They all love hiking and boating and the family spends a lot of time the summer months at their property in Star Valley, Wyoming. Jenny is an avid traveler and has been around the world. She considers it a great education, but her favorite place is Yellowstone. So with that, Jenny, I'll turn it over to you. Do you want me to start sharing my screen now or wait until the first queue? Um, yeah, just wait till the first queue, that's great. Perfect. And I just realized that I need to get you a new bio because my daughters are old, older than one. I was <laughs> wondering when I was when I was reading it, I was like, I wonder if they're older than that now. But they, yeah, that's, they are. For, that's so for next time, we love I'll, that. I'll make sure and get you a new one. Okay, so hi ahead. everyone, my name's Jenny Tanner and this is my second year being a mentor in the Women Who Succeed program. And I am super excited about talking to you all tonight. Um, the topic is new beginnings, looking ahead to your future. And for me, I think it's ironic that I have been asked to, to give this speech because I never thought about what I wanted to do when I was growing up. My parents both worked long hours just to make ends meet and make sure my brother and I had food on the table and a roof over our heads. And I don't even remember sitting down and talking with them about going to college. I had three jobs when I was a senior in high school, and all I could see in front of me was working. And Emily did such an incredible job with hers. I don't know that I'm going to be able to, to match what she did, but I'm going to give it a good shot. So, um, and I'm, you know, and I'm really envious of, of Emily having the ability and the internal strength to just continue and push forward because of my story, which you'll hear about. But I, I really have a lot of respect for her to just keep to just keep going and keep going and keep going until she achieved her goals. So Emily, you're a really great example of, of really sticking to your goals and no matter how long it takes getting through them. So thank you for sharing your story. Oh, thanks, Jenny. <laughs> So when I graduated from high school, and you guys, this is in 1980, before your parents were probably even thinking about having children or knowing each other. This is a really long time ago. Um, I was clueless on what I wanted to do for a living. I like to party a lot. And so I didn't really concentrate on what my future was. I was 18. I was hanging out with my friends. And again, I had jobs and I just really didn't feel like I had a direction. And so I sort of floundered a little bit until I was 23 and I moved to LA with a friend um, and LA was not my vibe. I did not like living there. I didn't feel like I was meeting any new people or had any really great friends. So I came back to Utah and I moved back in with my family, with my mom and dad. And I got a job down um, at KSL. I worked in their newsroom and I decided that, hey, I think I'll now go to college, which I think is really ironic that I decided to go to college because I was bored and not because I wanted to have a career in something. Again, for me, it was just something to do to waste time until I found what I wanted to do for a living. So when I was working at KSL um, and going up to the U, I, I think I worked there for two or three years and an opportunity came up for me to uh, apply to be a flight attendant working for Delta Airlines. And so I applied and I ended up getting the job, which meant that I had to move to Atlanta and I quit KSL and I quit school. And when I quit school, I thought, it's okay, I'll go back. 
I'll go back, no big deal. Um, but I didn't. And I think that it's it, it's sad for me. I I think about now, if I went back to school right now at 60 years old, what in the world would I do? <laughs> what, what would I get my degree in? What would I, how would I manage that schedule? And is my brain still functioning enough for me to be able to actually do the work it takes to graduate? So I, when I lived in, in, in Atlanta, um, I was a flight attendant and I didn't love being a flight attendant either. I guess I felt like, well, this is, this is sort of a, a thing to do until I meet the man of my dreams, until I get married and have a family. And, and not once in that dream did I think about me having a career for myself all I thought about was the next step is getting married and having a family. Now I'm a completely different person today uh, from, from the dream that I had back then. So I, I quit and I went to work for Mobile Oil, who I don't even know who they're owned by now, but they were eventually bought out. Um, and I just sort of pivoted from job to job, not really knowing or who I wanted to be or what I wanted to do. And I was, I was 25, 26, 27 years old. And I still, I just, I, I still felt really lost. So after 10 years of living in Atlanta, I decided to move back to Utah and my father owned a construction company. I knew nothing about construction, but he offered me a job uh, to work for him. And um, the construction company that, that he owned at the time um, does did the same thing that we do today almost we we do a little a few di little different things but he made me a salesman and I started selling doorknobs and mirrors and shower doors and my husband actually worked for my father so I met my husband the very first day that I went to work and um, speed forward five years we I was married I had a baby and we decided to start Tanner Glass and Hardware as a family business. Um, working in a family business is extremely difficult. We, first of all, it's your family. So imagine working with your brother or your sister every single day, eight hours a day. And you have different ideas about how to move the company forward or what you want to do as goals and how much money you want to spend on marketing and advertising. And they don't have that same vision that you have. So it can be really difficult working with family. And it, there are not a lot of businesses that are family run businesses who unfortunately the statistics are low for success in family run businesses. But we put our feelings aside, we work together to make it a success. And we worked for the company until 2011. And my brother passed away then. And my dad was really shaken up by it. And he retired a few months later. So I was left to run the business on my own. And I, it, it was, it was tough trying to figure out everything from the financials, the books, to um, learning how to take care of my employees. So this is my family, um, my husband, Thomas, my daughter, Haley, and my other daughter, Hannah, with the sunglasses on. Um, I consider myself to be an accidental entrepreneur because I didn't create the idea to start the business or come up with an idea for a new product, but I took it over. I worked hard to make it bigger and more profitable. And today, Tanner Glass has 75 people and, and we've been in business for 23 years. And now I've been able to step back and do more volunteer work and do things that are more important to me. So Haley is 23. She graduated from the University of Utah last May and Hannah is 18 and she has no desire to go to college. High school was rough for Hannah and homework was hard for her. And she came to me and just said, mom, I'm not going to college. And I respected her decision. 
And I, I, I have promised both of them, I'll do everything that I can to help you both, them both succeed in whatever path they want their future careers to be in. And I really hope that you all have families that, su that support your decisions on how far you want to go in your education. It's really important for you all to have people standing behind you in your decisions. And that was actually a trip when we went to Africa together last year. So each of you is going down a path in your education journey, maybe one that's expected by your family, or maybe one that is your choice. Your future can be very scary, but it also can be very exciting. Um, maybe everything's planned out, or maybe you haven't thought about your future education and you're only thinking about having school end and hanging out with my friends this summer. But whatever the scenarios are for your future, they're your choices. And it's okay if you're someone that doesn't know what you want to do in your profession right this very minute. You're young. You have so much time on your hands. It's also okay to question the path that you want to take and not do the same thing as your friends. You know, when your friends say, oh, I'm going to be a doctor, that's great for them. And maybe that's been in their soul for since they were five years old. Or maybe it's something that they just said off the top of their head because someone asked them that question. But you, you know your own path and the things that interest you and what you want to do. So don't do what your friends want to do. Do what you want to do. And I, I hear this all the time when relatives and people are asking my daughters, so what are you going to do when you get out of school? What are you going to do now that you've graduated? And it's, I mean, it's a common question and, and you don't want to lie. You don't want to make up something to them, but it, it's okay to tell people that I don't know, or I'm exploring my options. But if you do know what you want to do, that's awesome. I applaud you for no, knowing a lot more than what I did when I was your age. But if you don't, it's okay. So, so I thought this slide was funny because it's like, and I don't know if all of you hear this when people are constantly asking you. I think grownups don't know what how to talk to children or and talk to young women. And so they just make up stuff and say, so what are you going to do when you graduate? What are you going to do? What do you want to major in? Well, you don't know. And, I mean, you still have so much time on your hands. So again, just be honest and say, you know what? I don't know. Or I'm exploring my options. It's okay to say that you don't know what you want to do to grownups. So I don't know if you, any of you have even thought about this question. What does your future look like from your perspective today? Do you want to go all the way in school? Do you want to get a master's? Do you want to get a PhD? Do you want to serve your community in a service or do you maybe want to go on a mission in a church calling? Do you want to move and live in a different state or maybe even live in a different country? That would be so exciting. And my daughter Haley really wants to live in a different country and work for a few years. Do you want to get married? Do you want to have children? Do you want to travel before you settle down? Do you see yourself owning a business or do you see yourself being a CEO of a company? There are so many questions and you have so much time. And if you don't know the answer to any of these questions, congratulations. Life changes so quickly for all of you and your feelings about what you want to do today are going to be completely different than they are tomorrow. You have so much time to live and explore and find out who you are and what makes you happy. And the other thing that is so incredibly important in your lives and everything that you guys are going through right now with social media, life is hard for you. I, I don't know some of the things I would have done if social media and phones and being able to message friends and Snapchat and all the different apps that are out there. I know for sure that my teenage years would be completely different than they were because of what social media is today. And I feel like it can be a real hindrance on who you are and what people expect you to be and trying to keep up with Instagram and the filters and how, what you're supposed to look like. 
that isn't reality. Who you are is a beautiful person that has a lot to offer this world. And so taking good care of yourself mentally, emotionally, and physically is super important to being able to move forward and have the goals that Emily was talking about and to do the things in life that are important to you. Um, I mean, I hope that you guys have had the opportunity to make some new friends in this program. I know that you guys only meet once a month through this, but maybe you've been able to chat with some people. And then, and I know you've also met some really power, powerful mentors that have accomplished great strides in their own careers and have been a positive influence on you through some of these monthly meetings. But still, going through the issues that you guys go through today with kids and bullying and social media and just trying to be the best person that you can be is super hard. And if you find yourself feeling down, I hope you have someone that you can talk to, that you trust, that you can confide in and that you can go to. Um, so exercise is some of the things that I've learned in my old age. Um, exercise is a really great way for your body to release endorphins and serotonin. It helps ease, ease depression. It helps you feel better and sleep better. And it just gives you a better perspective on life. Mental health care is crucial to all of us. So give yourself some grace. Be kind to yourself. Don't compare yourself to those filtered girls that are on Instagram. They're not real. They don't look like that in real life. And they don't have the lives that they perceive themselves to have. You probably are more well-adjusted and have a lot more to offer than a lot of these girls that are trying to be something that they really aren't. Um, and, and, you know, life changes. Who you are today is not who you're going to be to be in a year from now. And so I think the depression hits a lot of people, a lot of young people, and they feel like it's not worth it. it. There's nothing to look forward to. And my family would be better off without me. And if you know someone that's in that situation, be their friend, talk to them. I don't want to go down a dark path here. This is supposed to be positive, but you have to take care of yourself. You have to do kind things for yourself. And if you do see your friends that are struggling emotionally, be kind to them. Let them talk to you. Be, be a good listener. The best part of being a good friend is being a good listener. And, and I know you all have it in you. So if I have nothing more to say about the social media aspect, it's that love who you are because that that isn't real and it's it's it just isn't who you are and it's not the way that you live your life every day okay goals so i don't want to i don't want to copy and 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 repeat what emily had um talked about too much but i found something that about there are six general goal setting tips and and I think you guys, I don't, I don't know if you guys went over this. I don't know if they have a packet or not, Sydney. Um, but in the April packet, you know, you guys talked about smart goals and setting both short and short term and long term goals and setting your smart goals and setting goals that motivate you and writing them down and putting in a place that you can see and adjusting your goals as necessary. And then when you finally meet that goal recognize that you met it and reward yourself. Do something kind for yourself. Go get ice cream, tell, you know, celebrate that goal with your family or a friend and go do something fun and, and really pat yourself on the back for accomplishing it. You know, you might have a goal to get a summer job or you might want to just have a goal to go hang out with your friends at Lagoon all summer and, and do nothing but not do not think about school and not think about homework. You may have a goal to buy a car or take a summer class or maybe learn a new language. And setting goals is a great way to plan and work towards things that are important to you. And again, as Emily said in, in this, writing them down and looking at them and 
reminding yourself of, of, okay, I've got, I'm giving myself a deadline. This is what I want to accomplish by this date. And just reminding yourself and making those stop, small steps to get there is, it's like taking small bites of a sandwich instead of one big bite. It's definitely more attainable to take those small bites and just take small steps to get where you want to go. I, 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 it makes me wonder if you guys, if you set, I don't know if any of you have set goals maybe a year to two years ago. And if you were to look back on those goals today, would they be relevant in your life? I don't know. Would they, would you laugh at them and say, oh my gosh, I can't believe that was even a goal. That's so silly. Or would you say, oh my gosh, yes, I had this goal and I achieved it and it's changed my life in these ways. So it doesn't matter what your age is. It doesn't matter what the goal is. If it's going to improve your life and teach you something, it's worth doing. Okay, uh, the fifth slide. So I don't know if any of you know who this person is, um, but it's it's a really good story. Her name is uh, Sarah Blakely, and Sarah Blakely is the founder of Spanx. Do any of you? Will you just raise your hand? Do you know? Does anybody know what Spanx are? Are you are you guys all too young to know what Spanx are? Okay, well Spanx are kind of like girdles. <laughs> And she has underwear and she has bras and tops and, and girdles that go up and they get all your fat out and they cover your up to your chest and they make you so you don't, all your rolls don't show and they cover thongs and they cover black underwear when you're wearing white pants. And so Sarah's story is very interesting. She had $5,000 in her personal savings account. And she lived in Florida and she was in, I don't even, I shouldn't ask you to raise your hand on this one because I don't think anybody will except for Mallory and Sydney and Emily, but um, she was selling fax machines door to door and fax machines are kind of a thing of the past now because everybody just scans and, and emails, but she was selling them door to door and she had to dress up. And it was such an interesting story. I really loved listening to her talk because she couldn't find anything to wear under her white pants when she, and, and she didn't want for people to see what was underneath her white pants. And it was very frustrating for her. And she would go to department store after department store and could never find anything that just wasn't showing those underwear. So she started buying pantyhose and cutting them up and sewing them and created Spanx from it. She was 29 years old when she created that, when she founded this company. And about a year and a half ago, she sold the majority of her business for $1.2 billion. And she was only 29 years old when she started it. And she's on Instagram. And she's a really good person to follow on Instagram because she really supports young women and is very positive and gives positive feedback and she always has these little coffee cup pictures there's she's got a ton of them she's she oh I don't know how often she does it but she's always got her coffee cup in her mouth so you can only see half of her face and all of these coffee cups have a different message on them every week or every month but she's she's always so positive and always has something really great and influential to say, and I just, I really love following her. I think she's a great mentor to so many women. So she runs her business through, well, when she used to run her business, um, she, she was empathetic because being a woman and running her business, she knew the challenges that she would have with men in the industry. You know, she never had, she never, she didn't have a degree in college, uh, no, I take that back. She might have. She didn't work in the fashion industry and she didn't have any education in the undergarment industry, but she was still able to use her in ingenuity and empathy and, and the kindness to build a brand for herself and become very successful. So she, so I look at her as one of my mentors and I just think it's an incredible story to 
to listen to and to follow. So if any of you are interested, you should follow her on Instagram. She's very cool. Okay. So it's been a year of change and a year of growth for all of you. I, and hopefully having a mentor this year and having all of the mentors that you've had have been valuable to your success and that you've learned a lot through the women that have spoken with you and the workbook that you've gone through and that you've been able to balance some of the issues that you've had with help from the women in the uh, Women Who Succeed program. Uh, and I hope that you get to keep in touch with them. I hope you try to keep in touch with them. Um, if you have a mentor that you've met, they would be such an asset for you to be able to talk to. They're invaluable and, and they will be there for you. I would be there for you. I would love to be able to speak with someone that had any questions or, or give some advice on, on something that you're going through. And, you know, your future is full of exciting opportunities. And I hope that you embrace everything that comes with, comes at you with an attitude that it's a learning opportunity and it's a chance for growth. Things are hard, like in, in Emily's, in Emily's talk and going down a path and having obstacles. Life is hard and, and challenging and don't get down on yourself. Don't get down on others. Just keep your head up and keep going. You'll have difficult choices and situations that come up and you'll certainly be sidelined, kind of like Emily. She was sidelined a lot of different times, but it's important to allow yourself to fail and to fall down. You can't learn the, le learn the lessons and the growth if you, if you try to be perfect. And looking back, I've learned so much in my life through failure and so many bad decisions, but I wouldn't trade them for anything that in all the growth that I have attained. Even today, I still feel like I've learned something new every time I allow myself to be vulnerable to a new experience. So I'm going to leave you with this. Always look out for you. Embrace how different you are from others. Be kind to yourself and be kind to everyone else. And know that this world is a better place because you are in it. Thank you. So does anyone have any questions for me? Oh, come on. Somebody's got to have a question. Come on, come on, come on. One question. So Jenny, yeah. um, when your dad retired and your brother passed away, um, what was something that you did to um, get yourself through like those trying times and learn what you needed to in your business? A lot of crying in a lot of praying. Um, and I had the support from a lot of the employees that worked there too. Like I said, when we started our company, there certainly weren't 75 people there. We started with 10 or 12 and we grew. And I'm really fortunate that a lot of the people that work uh, with me now today were there at the beginning. And I, I have a really long tenure. Most of my tenure with my employees is, is over 15 years I have people that have worked there for 20 and 15 and 10, and we just don't have a high turnover. So I think that having those people have my back and being able to be honest and open and raw in my emotions and tell them what I needed was a way that we all ended up getting through it together because we were also in the middle of the recession. And, and construction was hit really, really hard during the recession. So being, allowing myself to be vulnerable and asking for help was probably the best way that I got through it because people showed up for me by me asking for help. Great question, Emily. All right. It looks like you've got a question in the chat that says, how can I figure out what I want in my future? I would say to try a lot of different things because for, for me, like I said early on in my talk was I had to do a lot of things to realize what I didn't like. And you don't know what you like and what you don't like until you try them. And so you can have a box 
to check off the things that you like in a box and, and, a, and a piece of paper with different boxes to check off the things that you don't like. Um, you know, I was okay at math, but I certainly knew that I was never going to be an engineer. And it was, I mean, it, it was really obvious. And I have a pretty loud personality. And so talking to people and being in cells definitely came naturally to me. And even though I didn't like being a flight attendant that much, I was a great flight attendant because I would just jab, jabber, jabber, jabber with a lot of the um, passengers on the plane. So I think you have to try a lot of different things. And then if you don't like it, it's okay. You now can check a box that says, I don't like doing this. And then you'll never apply for a job or do something in your future or take classes with that thing that you didn't like. So you start narrowing down the field of what I like and what I don't like, but you have to do a lot of different things and try a lot of different things and put yourself out there. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jenny. We are a little bit over time, so we're going to we're going to wrap up so that I can do the giveaway. But Jenny and Emily, thank you both so much. Those were both incredible presentations, speeches, talks, whatever you want to call them. So amazing, so inspiring, and I really appreciate both of you getting getting vulnerable and and being willing to share that with us to teach us. So Ladies, um, thank you for attending. So good to see you. I look forward to seeing you at the wrap up celebration. Don't go anywhere because we're going to do the giveaway right now. But I wanted to say that just before because I know that y'all are going to bounce the second that I finish this. So I'm going to share my screen and I've got all of you on my little wheel here and I have three things to give away. So here we go. The first one, we are going to pick a winner for, I have two hang time, there are two hour jump passes for hang time. So our winner is Katie. Let's see, I think Katie's still on here. Yes, okay, Katie, I will email you and, and mail these to you. Congratulations. Okay, right. next winner is a free meal at Chick-fil-A. Here you go. Dun, 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 dun. Raya. Again, I will email you. Okay, last one. This is for a free original glazed dozen at Krispy Kreme. This is our last one. Ooh, looks like it's Eliza. Yay, congrats. Okay, I'll email our three winners. Everyone else, thank you so much for coming. And I will notify the winner of the scholarship. Um, by email tomorrow morning. But thank you all so much for coming. It was good to see you. And we'll see you at the wrap up event next month. Jenny and Emily, thank you again so much. You guys did amazing. And we'll see you at the mentee workshop. So have a good night, everyone.